Hello. Let's just wait for some people to join. I hope everyone can hear me actually. Let's double check. Hello, can everyone hear me? I'm Frankie, Jess is missing this week. Uh, she, I think she's at an opening night or something exciting. Um, so I'm excited to be covering for her. Um, this week is a super exciting week for all of us in the theatre industry because it's the first Theatre Chat Live that we've done where theatres are allowed to be open at full capacity, which is stupidly exciting. I've not seen anything yet. I mean, we've only had two days <laughs> to see something. I should have got, up, got on it though, shouldn't I? Um, so let me know how everyone is. It's absolutely boiling, isn't it? Just ridiculous. I'm living in a flat with, that just becomes a greenhouse, which just isn't ideal. Um, so I hope everyone's coping okay. In the heat in the UK, Although someone's just said, hello, I'm from India. Hi. It's, it's probably hotter there. I'll be honest. I don't know what we're complaining about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope everyone's seen some exciting theatre. Let me know what you've been seeing recently. Um, obviously, we can see things at full capacity now, which is super exciting. Um, if you want to know about any of the kind of safety measures that will still be in place um, now that we're at full capacity, then you can head to our website, officiallondontheatre.com. Um, we have our See It Safely pledge up there, which tells you all about kind of the, um, the protocols that will be in place and things that you also won't be seeing anymore. Um, so it's really important to kind of do a bit of research before you go to the theatre, I'd say, just so you know what to expect. Nothing too different, but it's just good to know. Um, we also have our Kids Week promotion still running. Um, we've got so many tickets still, which is so great. Um, loads of great shows on there for younger audiences, family friendly, musicals, whatever you're into, there are still loads of tickets left. Um, so that is uh, for tickets throughout the whole of August. So again, go to our website and check that out. Um, yeah, we're very excited. It's all, it's an exciting week and the heat is lovely, but it might be a bit much. Let me see what everyone's saying that they're seeing. Um, going to see six in August. That is so exciting. I still haven't seen six. I don't know how. Absolutely ridiculous of me. <laughs> it's top of my list. Just saw Amelie f four times over the weekend, 14 times in total. You are classed as a mega fan. That is absolutely crazy. I mean, I'm assuming you love it. <laughs> so that's great. I've heard, I don't think, I've not seen Amelie either, but I've heard some really, really good things. Um, so who else has been seeing? So six on Friday in Newcastle, lots of love for six. Um, I'm seeing Hairspray on Sunday. That's so exciting. Um, they've just reopened after a small closure for, um, because of a COVID case, I think. So the atmosphere I'm sure will be amazing. Fingers crossed not too many more shows will be closing because of COVID. Um, I know a lot of people are commenting saying Cinderella was canceled. Um, which is such a shame, but hopefully we'll see things up and running in full swing soon, which will be super exciting. And there's already so, there's still so much out there um, that you can go and see and um, get your tickets at Official London Theatre. Or if you want, um, if you're into kind of more impromptu plans, um, then you can also head to the TKTS section of our website to get on the day tickets. We had some great deals today. Um, we had like more than 40% off Heathers um, and Hairspray for on the day performances. So keep checking um, our website for super cheap uh, tickets for on the day if you are kind of bored of having to plan in advance so much. I know I am, um, I think with the pandemic, obviously every time you wanna go to a restaurant or a pub or whatever, you're having to book just weeks in advance, aren't you? Cause everyone's so desperate to get out. Um, so that's why TKTS is so great because you can book on the day um, and it's kind of so exciting I always think to not have a theatre plan for months in advance and then suddenly go, do you know what, I'm going to do a theatre tonight. Um, what else have people been seeing? Let's have a look. Hopefully Joseph in August, someone's going to go see. That's going to be really exciting. My friend went to see it the other day and said it was great. She said Alexandra Burke was particularly brilliant. <laughs> 
Oh no, school trip to six was cancelled. Hopefully you'll get to see it again. I've seen Heather's five times already. I saw Heather's a few weeks ago. I was lucky enough to go to the opening night and it was so good. We didn't know what to expect and it blew me away. It was so, it was so much fun. I feel like it's just what we need after the pandemic. <laughs> Someone's booked for Frozen. That is so exciting. I'm absolutely desperate to see it. It's gonna be so good. I think we've got some behind the scenes um, videos on our YouTube channel and just from that, those little like sneak peeks, it looks phenomenal. <laughs> I got a musical theatre award at school for my dream class as well. Done, congrats, that's really exciting. Oh, someone's got a long list here, seeing six Prince of Egypt, Horrible Histories and Frozen at the moment. Want to see Hairspray and Joseph, saw Cinderella in previews. Big dog, musical theatre fan there. <laughs> that is so lucky. That's Thank you for supporting the industry, is all we can say, really. <laughs> Someone's saying Frozen, anything goes. Um, Cinderella. Very exciting. Now, let me just have a look so we are waiting now someone is in the waiting room very excitingly for us it is lizzie dewar from the tiger who came to tea one of the iconic children's books i'm sure a lot of you will remember it from your childhood uh so that's playing at the moment at the theater royal haymarket it is olivier uh, award nominated so yeah we're just gonna speak to her for our first interview hello, hello. hello. hi how are you me? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, thank you. yeah really good. Ah. Are you enjoying the heat or is it too much? <laughs> oh, when you're on the stage, it's a bit much, oh, but I'm enjoying it when, uh, when we're not there. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, it must be boiling on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, feel the tiger. It's yeah. very warm. Oh my gosh, I yeah. can't even imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself and your route into theatre? Absolutely, yes. Um, so my route into theatre was sort of a bit higgledy-piggledy. I um, started as a dancer and I went to a school that actually it doesn't exist anymore, it's called Liberatus and it was run by um, Yvonne Evans who was a dancer with Arlene Phillips in Hot Gossip. Yeah, a bit random. Um, so I did that and then I sort of, I didn't, in my third year I didn't get an agent, kind of, I went through a bit of a like you know, and you're, you're in and you're out, you're in and out. Um, so I went and did something completely different and then I realised I couldn't live without being on the stage. So I went to Central School of Speaking Drama and I did MT, the MT, uh, MT pathway there. Uh, yeah, I did three years there, finished in 2017. Um, and then sort of as I came into the industry, um, I'd done a few bits of... Um, like theatre and education so I kind of dipped back into that sort of straight away to keep, keep some money coming in really um and then got very very lucky did a really lovely audition for Tiger um yeah and, and that's sort of my my professional you know professional debut I suppose yeah. um with them oh how yeah. exciting that's great um, and obviously we don't want to dwell too much on the past year, but what have you kind of, if anything, what have you kind of been up to the last year? <laughs> um, yeah, what a year, right? 18 months of craziness. Um, so I was already qualified as a personal trainer, so I have been doing lots of personal training in the time. Um, and I worked at a boot camp in Whitney, which is where I'm, in Oxfordshire is where I'm from. Um, which was lovely in the summer and a bit sad in the winter when we were, you know, being rained in, <laughs> snowed, and then um, and then we got closed again and um, and things like that. But yeah, just doing loads of workshops and um, I worked with Stagecoach quite a bit, doing a few Tiger um, Tiger workshops with their minis, you know, the sort of diddy ones, um, which is lovely to sort of get a bit of a little bit of um, theatre yeah. <laughs> within it all. Um, yeah, that's it really. <laughs> then a lot of Netflix and um yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. speaking of Tiger what can you tell us like a little bit about the show obviously I'm sure people have not a lot of people have read the book um a little bit about the yeah. show and then a bit about your character because you played the mummy don't you I do yeah. play mummy yes um 
so yes uh the show is it's we try, we try to lift it almost exactly from the book so all of our costumes are exactly the same um we've taken direct lines in as well but obviously the book's about 12 pages long yeah. or something like that so we've extended it we've got um a bit of singing which we encourage the kids to join in with us um and a bit of dancing and again we ask them to stand up and join in which is always like such a joy to watch them do it um yeah, so it, it's literally, we take them on the exact journey of the book. So if you've read the book, then you've pretty much seen the show, but you haven't seen the songs and dances, so uh, come along, because it's, it's great fun. Yeah. And the energy, actually, we were saying about, um, our creative team was saying yesterday, uh, since yesterday, um, after restrictions sort of lifted, so we're allowed to encourage the children to talk back mm. and sing with us. Um, it's like having the fourth member of the cast back. Uh, it's lovely. It's really lovely, and they are they are such a massive part of the show. So it's re it's been such a a joy being back yeah. on the stage. No, I can imagine. And what is kind of the thing that you enjoy most? Well, so far, obviously, it's not been long. But what has been thing the thing you've been enjoying most about being back on stage? Um, I think seeing their reactions, seeing the children, just being like, and. Uh, you're getting quite, we're getting quite a few children who actually have never been to the theatre before Aww. because, you know, they've been, they've been in a pandemic for the last year and a half. So it's, it's, it's quite a few people's first time at the theatre, people's children's. Um, and, uh, and yeah, seeing their reaction, especially when the tiger comes out, is <laughs> honestly, if you could bottle it yeah. and sell it, you would. Uh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So that's my favorite, yeah. definitely. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, obviously, it is such an iconic children's book. Did what is your favourite children's book? What was it when you were growing up? Oh, oh my goodness, that's so hard. Uh, do you know what? I loved going on a bear hunt. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, it can't go under it. Can't go over it. Uh, uh, that was one of my favourites for sure. And my mum was brilliant at reading that one as well. So credit to mum. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, so what is kind of your favorite genre to perform then obviously you're in family shows at the moment um yeah. but is that kind of your favorite genre uh i do love it I, I, I do really really like the kids shows um but probably a bit of comedy is is my favorite uh, you'll see if you come and see the show um it's a bit tongue-in-cheek every now and then we're trying to get you to have a giggle it's not a serious show and that's that's my favorite kind i think when everyone is in it together we're all sort of poking a bit of fun at everyone um so yeah a bit of uh, you know things like uh the play that goes wrong i saw that one when it was first being developed over at um oxford um playhouse and i was like yes i want to be in this this is exactly it um yeah. it's so, so yeah I mean, that kind of show at the moment is such a kind of tonic isn't it just anything that makes people laugh and happy yeah. after the last year is what we need really isn't it absolutely yeah yeah we just need to be taken away from some of the pants things that have happened over the last year definitely, definitely um oh gosh i just heard thunder i'm actually really hoping it's, it's like really grumbly isn't it out there <laughs> um and so what is kind of the i mean this might be an obvious question maybe it's obviously the kids are there but what is different about performing in a show that's kind of aimed for kids so um oh as a as an actor it's sort of um you've got to be really direct with your focus because if you do too many flowery things <laughs> um which you want to do as an actor you want to stay alive on the stage obviously but if you're taking the focus um the kids won't understand the story so you've got to be really like direct with the way that you're um where they're supposed to look <laughs> yeah um and, and you're sort of pulling their focus um in the direction that you're they need to go um but and, and i suppose in a way it's it's a bit more like um like a traditional panto where it's like so you need to you're the you're the fourth uh, cast member so we need you to give us the things back so that we can move on to the next bit you know yeah. so they're they're very much involved in the show, um, way more than you would 
<laughs> way way more than you would be in a, in a normal setting and so yeah I suppose it's um the main difference is that we actively encourage you to speak um there's doesn't matter if there's grumbles all the way through that's kind of nice we like the energy to come back that way um yeah and just like keeping it really really lively all the time the energy cannot drop or you'll lose them <laughs> you can't. Can imagine. They constantly being like on high alert yeah yeah them. that sounds like such a skill so yeah i mean not that you can turn off really when you're on stage anyway but that sounds like to the extreme <laughs> <laughs> it has been i suppose and it was massive a massive learning curve that you know you can't just you can't just sit there and listen you've got to like actively be like looking at the you know the, all of the focus has to be coming through you into them and back yeah so yeah yeah it's, um oh that's so interesting but, yeah 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 um and do you have i mean obviously aside from mummy <laughs> do you have a dream <laughs> role <laughs> oh a dream role goodness there's so many amazing roles for sure i think annie and play the Girls role is like brilliant obviously so that would be amazing I've always had a thing about Vita. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I think it would be an amazing experience to play the Vita. My dad had the um I blame everything on my dad. He <laughs> got me into Dick Van Dyke films when I was younger and we had cats on video. <laughs> um <I think> we <laughs> did, <probably. laughs> Yeah. Um and then um and then he bought the album when he was younger mm. of Vita and it was always on on in our house so i think it's, it's sort of ingrained in me that i need to i need to be yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. and do you remember the first show you ever saw or if you don't what is your fate do you have a favorite ever show oh goodness so the, i think the first show i ever saw was cats um and then we had and then we had the video um and all of, I've got three siblings and all of us are a bit, a bit obsessed with musical theatre <laughs> um, because of it, because we yeah. went and saw it. And then my aunt picked up that I really loved it. She took me to see My Fair Lady. Oh, no. And that probably still one of my favourites. Mm. Um, although it's probably not particularly politically correct anymore, you know, <laughs> making the lady a lady. But, but I still, you know, all of the songs and that was so much fun and, her being able to be like fog off to him you know yeah yeah sort of stuff and so yeah it's wicked I love that one yeah that's, that's the same as me yeah. like some of the slightly older ones are still my favorites but I always feel so conflicted about it because I'm like this isn't cool anymore <laughs> yeah. exactly they're so good. exactly <laughs> they're so good maybe a mini rewrite yeah every there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, so I know that a lot of our followers are kind of really keen to get into the industry in, in lots of different ways. Um, what kind of advice would you give to people, maybe sort of school age that are looking to take that career path? Yeah. Oh, um, I would say just get involved in as many local things as you possibly can. Um, you know, I when I was younger, I was in a thing called stage school which is a bit like a, an early version of stage coaching thing and then um I went to Swindon Dance Academy when I was a bit older when I was about 16 to 18 um and those two things really set me in really good stead to then go and do some do some work really go and do a bit of um theatre and education and you know starting starting your career <laughs> so sort of in a very roundabout way when you're quite young you can be quite helpful you know you can make lots of mistakes so go and make all the mistakes now <laughs> and then um and learn from them yeah. and meet lots of people yeah knowing people is um is probably your biggest asset you know um, yeah so yeah meet lots of people talk to them and, and try to yeah make friends just yeah. make friends go make some <laughs> we had someone the other week kind of saying one of the most valuable things was just like being nice to everyone because you don't know when you're yeah. going to see them again and meet them again and in what situation that can, that's going to be. That's so true. I mean, you could, you could, um, <laughs> I heard a really brilliant story of a, an actor who was quite rude on the tube and then they ended up in the audition <laughs> and on the panel was the person that they were a bit rude oh, to no. on the tube. So you don't know, yeah. you don't know who's 
exactly. who is who. Well, there you go. That's a moral. That's a lesson for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, not just not just the acting, but yeah. for everything. For sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, and then just finally, why should people come and see the Tiger Who Came to Tea? Oh, because if you want to just feel filled up with <laughs> five-year-old energy and joy, then that's exactly where you need to be. It's an hour of just pure fun. No, no seriousness. You don't have to listen to any politics or any, you know, any more COVID stuff. It's just about coming, having fun, being a bit silly, um, and then going with a smiling face. So yeah, so come, come, come and see your smile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can get the tickets on our Kids Week promotion, and they Indeed. are kids go free. So everyone listening, go go head to our website and do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. It's been lovely to chat Thank with you. you too. Oh, how lovely was that? I used to absolutely love the Tiger Who Came to Tea when I was younger. Um, and I bet it just makes the loveliest stage show. Like she said, just being filled up with all that kind of energy of kids just being so excited. And when they see the tiger, I just bet it's so great. If you want to get tickets, as I just said, uh, they are available in our Kids Week promotion. So you can get Kids Go Free for the whole of August. So go to our website and take advantage of that now. Right, let me have a look. So we'll be going live with our second guest soon. Um, very exciting, this one. So a bit different as well. So she is a celebrity vocal coach um, worked with some of the biggest voices in the industry. Um, Jennifer Hudson, Nicole Scherzinger, Amy Winehouse. I mean, does it get bigger? Uh, she is Annabelle Williams, and I think she might be waiting now. Let me have a look. Hello. Hello. Hi, gorgeous. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. I was suddenly very scared I hadn't done it right because it said your <laughs> send request hasn't has an error or something. I was like, oh no, this is difficult. <laughs> Typical, no, we've made it. <laughs> oh, Don't worry. How are you then? I'm great. I'm worried that you can hear my fan because I've got this fan behind oh, me. Oh, don't worry. But it, it's, the it's thunder necessary. outside is so loud. I was so worried it was going to oh. fight. Okay. So I'm hoping, though, if a storm does come, <laughs> the heat's going to get slightly I less. I cannot deal with it. I'm so completely British about it. I just yeah, me too. We cannot, we cannot hope. We I know hope. it's ridiculous. Our flat is just like an absolute greenhouse as well. Oh, it's, it's not, not what you want. I've yeah. been teaching in a hot, sweaty teaching room all day. I've been in dance attic in Fulham on like the top floor. Oh. Um, and I actually took this fan with me. Um, and I said to my assistant this morning, is there any air conditioning there? And she said, no. Oh no! Quite right, so I'm bringing this, and I just have this glued to me, but <laughs> I, I couldn't have done without it. Anyway, at least at least it's it's fine. It's just it's just weather. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so cool. So do you want to first of all tell us a little bit about yourself, and then your sort of route into the industry? Sure. Um, well, my name's Annabelle. I'm a vocal coach and singer, probably more well known as a vocal coach, and. Um, yeah, I I started out um, I started out sort of doing big band work on, uh, with the National Youth Jazz Orchestra and started coaching there and spent most of my twenties touring the world as a backing singer and then about eleven years, ten eleven years ago, I got the job on X Factor uh, and from there the celebrity vocal coach thing just absolutely snowballed quite by accident and um, and the rest is history. Cool. It is so cool. I have to say, it sounds like you've had an amazing. I have. <laughs> I do have the best. I have the best job in the world. I say it every day. I have the best job in the world. I'm so lucky. Oh, um, but so I absolutely lovely. love it. It doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like work at all. It's mm. just, I'm very very lucky. Yeah. That's goals, isn't it? That's what everyone needs to strive for. It doesn't yeah, feel like totally. work. Totally. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I do feel really really lucky. So. Yeah. Um. So what have you kind of been up to this past crazy year? <laughs> Well, I mean, I was incredibly lucky because, you know, so many of my friends in this industry, choreographers, makeup artists, that sort of thing, cannot work online. Um, and I was able to, I was, I was, me and my team were able to work online and I was able to do three different TV shows last year, all sat from here in from my living room, which is why I sort of made a bit of a 
snazzy background. I've got my <laughs> oh, very nice. got my logo and I've got plants <laughs> sticking out my head and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I was really, really lucky that I could do that from here. And then and then it's just been the same really this year. Um I also really I also made and released an app in lockdown. I mean what else are you gonna do? Um which was which has been really successful. It's been the number one vocal warm up app in the world, which is just oh. in Incredible because it was just made by little old me and uh, so the app and the TV shows have kept me insanely insanely busy and that's just carried on through this year now yeah now I can imagine so can you tell us a little bit more about the app then yeah so basically uh, it's it's a great tool for existing singers and also beginners so if you're just starting out or it's something that you always wish that you'd had lessons or that sort of thing it's great for that but it's also designed for existing singers so Probably a lot of your followers, uh, it would be great for because whether you're singing on the West End or in Broadway or, you know, if you're a backing singer with an artist or if you're the artist yourself or you sing on a cruise ship or whatever capacity you do your singing and not just for performing for, for um, rehearsals and recording sessions and writing sessions. It's designed to warm you up with really fun, cool warm up exercises that work. These are tried and tested exercises that that I've used for years myself. And they're really like, what makes them different is they're to really funky backing tracks with live instruments. They're not boring warm ups, you know, they're really fun, interesting warm ups. Like, I wanted to make the warm up app exercises sound like a Bruno Mars album, for example. <laughs> so they're really, really cool. Um, and there's a matching video with every single exercise, easy, medium, and hard. It's super easy to use. And so you just watch the video of me explaining how to use the, uh, how to do the exercise efficiently and correctly. So you get the most out of the exercise. Um, and in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. It's, it's basically so you kind of have me, it's like having me there, but in an app. Yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. I need to get it. I Yeah. It's called um, The Vocal Coach, by the way. So it's... Um, oh, yeah. That's it's like, to know. <laughs> yeah. It's called... <laughs> what is it called? It's called The Vocal Coach. I mean, if you go onto my uh, main page, it's in the link mm. there. And it's available for Android and iOS. Great, how exciting. What a good project to have done over lockdown. Yeah, I love it. I, I mean, it's a full-time job, but I absolutely yeah. love it. And you know what, the, the feedback I get from various artists and singers mm. is just incredible. You know, people just messaging me going, I had no voice and you've got my voice back, or I haven't sung for a year and a half, you've got my confidence back, um, just from doing these exercises every day. So, And you, oh. can make, you can make your own little personal workouts. You can choose your favourites and turn it into a little playlist and do your own personal Oh, workout. that's cool. Very cool. Okay, so if I know that a lot of our followers kind of are interested in getting into the industry in whatever capacity that might be, but specifically vocal coach wise, what would you say to someone who kind of wanted, m might want that as their dream job? <laughs> what, to get into vocal coaching? Yeah. I think, I think it's really important um, as a vocal coach that you, you spend a bit of time being an actual singer. Mm. You know, being a jobbing, working singer, going through everything that a normal singer goes through, going through losing the voice, going through the nerves, going through the highs and the lows, because everything that I teach is so much of it is drawn from my own personal experience. Um, and I think it's so important to be practicing what you preach. You know, I still do gigs here and there when I can uh, around the TV shows and things like that, because otherwise it's all very well me demonstrating and giving the advice but if I haven't been on stage for years and years, then I, I'm not current. So I need to keep current. I need to keep keep myself on my toes. Mm. You know, it's important for me that I stay in it and doing it and keeping my... I need to go through... For example, I had my first couple of gigs back since lockdown about a month, about three weeks ago. And I was genuinely nervous because I haven't <laughs> been on stage for a year and a half. Like yeah. Anybody else, you know. I absolutely loved every second. It was so much fun just to get on that stage with my eight piece band, horn section, back and singers. It was awesome. Oh. And I've got a couple coming up. I've got, I'm headlining at Ronnie Scott's on the 27th of August, which I'm so excited about. And just to be making live music, you know, people think, you know, for artists and all of us, you know, we think that it's the audience that are so excited to see, you know, live music and performance again. But actually, we're just as excited yeah. <laughs> to be on that stage doing it again. So, yeah, incredibly, incredibly excited. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Yeah. And if I had to make you choose, do you prefer coaching or singing on stage? Do you know what? I, I get asked this a lot. It, it constantly changes. I mean, mm -hmm. I am a singer. I, I, when, even when I first started coaching, I used to say, I'm not a real coach, I'm a singer. <laughs> but, but then I think that's what, 
that's what works mm. is that you have to be doing it you know so many of the vocal coaches that i admire and i look up to are jobbing singers and they've been through it and they and they understand how it works it just it it just doesn't work if you haven't been through it yourself i don't think personally um so yeah i think you know if i am just like sometimes don't get me wrong when i'm deep in the thick of the x factor and i'm on week <laughs> eight and all i've been doing is vocal coaching i do get a little bit give me the mic as i call it <laughs> but um you know i think that's natural <laughs> um, but i really really you know if, I, if i'm just coaching i do miss the singing but we, but i always do like a little gig and i get it out of my system and then it's fine because i still do backing vocals and, and mm -hmm. arrangements and things like that so um but i i just i'm obsessed with the coaching i love it i think if i had to answer i'd say the coaching i just get so much out of it and it suits me so much it suits mm. my personality so much yeah yeah, yeah. So what, if you had to pick then what is kind of your very favourite thing about the coaching? I think probably my favourite thing, there's probably two, I would say one is, and I had it this morning with a client, that moment when the thing that they've never been able to do and that they've stood there and said to me, I can't do this, I've <laughs> never ever done this, and then you've got them to do it. I had it this morning with this girl who wanted to try and sing this Ariana ridiculously high note it was a top A flat she was like I've never ever been able to go near it and I said you can do it you physically can do it you just don't know how and I taught her how to do it and it was that moment of like seeing her so excited yeah. by oh, I just did this with my voice and I was like did my happy dance because I'm just so so I get so excited and so into it when you see it really working for them that I really yeah. really get off on and then the other thing is just standing side of stage and watching your artists mm -hmm. go out there and do it. And obviously for the world I'm in as well, working in these TV shows, watching the contestant when you've been through so much, all the tears, all the laughs, all the hugs, <laughs> they finally get out there. And a lot of these um, kids and adults aren't experienced and they get out there on stage and do it. And just to watch from the side, I get like, <gasps> my baby, my baby, get all emotional <laughs> about it. Cause I'm just so yeah, proud, you know? I can imagine. Um, so speaking of sort of like X Factor and everything, what? Do you have, I mean, it must be so difficult because it sounds like you've had a pretty illustrious career. Um, but do you have kind of like a highlight, a total highlight moment? I have so many highlights. <laughs> yeah, I can explain. One that just popped into my head was um, standing in Wembley Arena on the stage teaching Robbie Williams' Angels. That was a, <laughs> that was a, that was a, a pretty amazing, amazing moment because he was a judge on X Factor and he was doing his duet with the singer who came second she was a runner-up and her name was Scarlett Lee and she was the most insane amazing singer and she, he was her judge and so they got to do a duet at the end of the show um, as, as they all did they all did their celebrity yeah. duet. and it, he was doing angels and I'd done vocal arrangement and I was on stage teaching them who was singing what bit and um, she he's looking at me like what do you want me to sing here what do I do here and I was just like <laughs> is this is this happening right now and you're like you're you're in Wembley Arena you're looking out and it's you can't even see the back and it's on the massive x stage it was just a brilliant brilliant moment very yeah. very lucky yeah it sounds incredible um and if you had to this might be tricky but if you had to pick a go-to warm-up exercise you don't necessarily have to do it <laughs> but <laughs> then what do you have one that is like your absolute favorite one that's your go-to uh, my favourite is everyone else's favourite, and it's one of my riff ones. I have quite a few, like, because most, so many people come to me going, I really want to get better at riffing. Who doesn't mm. want to get better at riffing? So one of them is the one that, and, and on Celebrity X Factor, all the Love Island lot and Ricky Lake and all these people, they just all went crazy for this one. It goes like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. And we basically do that, at, like, going up in keys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. And so on, and it's really fun. There's a really fun back. Yeah. Up it. So there's loads of exercises like that on the app, which um, that is so exactly. cool. Yeah, because I think it, you know, for me, my singing lessons when I was growing up weren't the most fun. Yeah. You know, inspiring kind. Of, I didn't come away going yes, I'm going to, come <laughs> to practice, and that's what I want. You know, I want people. My my clients leave their lessons going, oh my god, that was amazing. I just did with that with my voice. I can't wait to do it every day. I'm so excited. Mm. You know. I give my absolute heart and soul into every every hour that I coach, and I think that's so so important. Um, and so I really want when people are doing their warm ups and using my app to be like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! I can't wait to do it again tomorrow." 
yeah you know, or if you're like in the dressing room doing your makeup and getting ready and doing your hair and stuff you just stick it on put it through a little portable mm. speaker and then just start the exercises so yeah no it sounds yeah. like fun <laughs> and then just finally what is i mean you've had such a busy year by the sounds of it but what is next for you <laughs> oh my god it's so exciting i can't tell you oh no <laughs> so i'm doing three tv shows between now and the end of the year and one of them I can tell you about, it's the next series of I Can See Your Voice, which is a hilarious new TV show on the BBC, um, which aired, the first series just finished airing in April. Um, and it's really, really fun. So if you haven't watched it, check it out. It's really, really fun. And then the next two I couldn't possibly tell you about, but they're really, I'm really excited. One of them is Worldwide. Uh, and the other one is a brand new TV show coming at the end of the I don't actually know when it airs, but I know we start rehearsals for it towards the end of the year. But you'll, you'll, it'll, be, it'll be all over my, my Instagram nearer the time. But right yeah. now, it's all very early days. So I'm very, very excited. And totally blown away that the dates are actually all coinciding. That never happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, as you probably know, like these things are always like, oh, it's really annoying. The dates always, always clash. Yeah. So the dates are working out. Touch wood. So, yeah. How exciting. <laughs> Well, that sounds amazing. You feel, it feels like you're non-stop. <laughs> Always. Absolutely. I don't know anything else, but I love it. I'll keep going yeah. as long as everyone will have me. So I'm very, very lucky. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. That was lovely. That was so thank you so much, my darling. Do I just do the thing cross at the yeah, top? Yeah, you click off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks so much for having thank me. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. It's really, really brilliant. And I loved the interview before with the girl before. It was oh, brilliant. thank I you. I thought the advice about just always be nice it's yeah so true um my my three things i'll just finish on this is just always be brilliant at what you do always be on time and always be nice and you can't you can't go wrong so i was really really <laughs> agreeing with her on that i thought it was really oh, good all right my love thank you so much thank you so bye. much bye oh, that was so interesting how different i loved hearing about that so I hope everyone's enjoyed both interviews today. That was very contrasting. So we had Tiger who came to tea first, Lizzie Dewar, uh, who plays Mummy. Uh, like I said before, if you weren't watching before, um, you can, you'll be able to watch back on IGTV or our YouTube. Um, and you can get tickets for that uh, in our Kids Week promotion, um, which runs all the way throughout August. Um, and then you can also go and check out um, Annabelle's Instagram and her app and everything uh, will tag her in the caption. Um, hope everyone is enjoying the heat and coping. Hope you're all going to go and see some really lovely theatre now. We're at full capacity. So exciting. And we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>